So something else that you might want to do with audio is to add sound that's not already in your project. Things like music or sound effects or narration. Final Cut Pro has nice tools for adjusting all of those things. So um, to get started, I've opened up my project that has the waterfall footage that we worked with way back in the earlier sequences of the, and we want to just add a nice piece of music to that track. Almost always people feel like they want to put music in their program somewhere. Metro East actually uh, has a contract with a company that provides us with music. Uh, it's called the DeWolf Collection and there's a huge collection of music that we pay for that we have a license to use in shows that are broadcast on television. So talk to uh, our staff in the equipment room and they can show you how to access all of that music collection. In the meantime, I just want to show you how to get the music into your program. So I'm going to start by going uh, on my screen here. In the far upper left part of the screen, we have a couple of buttons that we haven't talked about yet way up here. Um, the button that has the, the little purple clapboard on it there is what's showing us our library and our events below that. Um, so if you ever want to come back to this view, that button is what does that. These two buttons here are what let us add things like photos or music or titles or things called generators to the project. So if I click on this little button with the music notes on it, it'll open up a window here that shows us three items. It says GarageBand, iTunes, and sound effects. GarageBand is actually a popular piece of software, uh, that, which we won't talk about, which is used for creating your own music. Uh, GarageBand has loops of different instruments that you can string together to basically create your own music tracks for your video, but that's kind of another subject for another time. In this case, we want to come to the second little button on the list there that says iTunes. iTunes, if you're not familiar with it, is basically software that allows you to download music clips or you know, rip music off of a CD, that sort of thing. So when we click on the iTunes button, it'll show us a list of music that's already been uploaded to this computer. So there's a fairly long list of different songs that are available here. For many of these, you'll notice that there are several versions of them. For example, this song that says On Our Own, says On Our Own 30, and then On Our Own Full. Those are just different lengths of the same piece of music. So the people who provide us with the music give us the full length song, three minutes, and then they also have made what's called a commercial length, which is 30 seconds. So sometimes you'll see 60 second versions or 30 second versions or full versions. Uh, even something called stingers, which are just really short, like four or five second long uh, versions of the song. So to listen to these, to, um, to sort of audition them, all you really need to do is select one, and then I can click on the little play button that appears just at the side of that, and I should be able to hear the song. So if that's not your cup of tea, you can just keep looking around until you find the song that you like. Now, you know, if you're trying to find something that's going to work with, you know, this waterfall music, obviously you want to find something that's a little bit slower and, you know, more meditative. So this might not be the right choice for that. So we can just keep kind of looking through until we find something that we think might be appropriate for waterfall. Okay, so say that you're happy with this and you want to use the longer version here. All you need to do is just drag this from this window as if it were a clip onto the timeline. but Remember, this is just sound and not video, so we just want to put this um, below the video tracks. So to do that, I can just grab this and drag down, and you'll notice that, first of all, the clip is green, so it tells you that it's just a sound clip, and I want to put it, position it below the clips that are on my primary storyline, and if I want it to start at the beginning of my video, I want to drag it all the way over to the left here, like that. Remember, this is an attached clip, so it's always going to have that little spike, that little nail that pokes into one of the clips up there on the timeline. You can see it there when I stretch it out. So that's going to be attached to one of those clips on the primary storyline. Now, obviously, the music right now is a lot longer than the clips that we have on our timeline. I could, if I want to zoom out a little bit and then trim the music clip, just like we've done earlier, use the trim tool to make it match the length of my clip. And then I could add those fader points like we did in the last segment to make the music fade out at the end if you wanted to. Um, but in this case, I'm going to zoom in now a little bit. Oops, sorry, let me zoom in on the right spot there. Going to zoom in a little bit so I can see those clips more easily. 
And then I still need to adjust the levels of this music just as I did the, the people speaking in a previous segment. So I can grab the line here and drag it up or down to make the music louder or quieter. But I want to look at my VU meter, so I'm going to play a little bit of the music here. I'm going to push the space bar to make it play. Try to make sure what the right volume is. Now this presents a little bit of a problem because you can see that the audio level for our waterfalls, especially when the camera is close to the water, is quite loud. So I could use my little audio control there to drag that down and make the audio on the waterfall quieter. You could just turn it down completely. You could detach the audio, you could turn it all the way down. I think sometimes it's nice to keep a little bit of the waterfall sound so you can hear that with the music. So you still get the sense that you're hearing falling water, but you're mixing it together. So this is where you need to use your ears to be able to judge whether the volume of the waterfall is quiet enough that it's not making it hard for the, the listener to, to hear the music also. Um, but you want the overall volume uh, of the music combined with the waterfall to still be peaking at minus 12 on the scale that we looked at before on the VU meter here. Okay, so now I could just play through that, listen to my music. You can see that, it, that adding the music adds quite a lot to the mood of the video. Okay, so again, to get to the music, you can go up to that upper left corner up there, click on the little button with the music notes on it, and look at the iTunes uh, window to see all the collection of music that's available. Then you just drag those onto the timeline and place them below the video clips like that. You can have as many of those as you want. So you could put another clip below that one and hear two pieces of music simultaneously. Um, you also have access to a collection of sound effects here in the same uh, menu. If I click on that, then it will show me a list of different sound effects here that are available. And there's a huge number of them. They're arranged alphabetically. Um, so um, you can um, sort them by the name of the clip, by the length of the clip, by the, by the genre. So it's, for example, you have a collection of animal sounds, impacts and crashes, those kinds of things. So you can easily find the ones that you want. So you can sort them by clicking on the header on each one of those columns. You can also search for one. So if you're trying to find water, you can click into the, into the little window at the top that has a magnifying glass, type the word that you want to search for, and then it'll find all of those. So if you didn't get good water when you were actually shooting out or water sounds when you were out shooting with the camera, you could always go back and add sound effects after the fact here. So let me get rid of that. So if I wanted to add another sound here, and this might not make much sense, but just to break uh, someone's ability to uh, relax to this, I could put in the sound of a bear. Now notice I can put that right below or above the audio clip that's the music. And now as we play through the music, just as people are getting all mellow and relaxed. And So see, you can stack the audio clips there and hear as many audio tracks simultaneously as you want, but you should make sure that the combined volume doesn't exceed minus 12 on the audio scale. So that's one way that you can add additional sounds to your project, going to the, the audio tab up here and adding either music from iTunes or sound effects from the sound effects tab. So another way that you might want to add sound to your project is um, recording some narration, recording your voice, so that you can describe what people are seeing on the screen, you can describe the locations that they're looking at, or you could do something like record yourself reading poetry or something like that to put along with the waterfalls. To do that, you first of all need to hook up some sort of device to be able to get your voice into the computer. We have microphones that you can check out and then audio adapters like this one, uh, adapts from the connector on the microphone to one of the USB connectors on the back of the computer back here. So now that we have that plugged in, now we can go up and on the computer screen again, I can go up to the menus at the top of the screen, go to the window menu, and then to the function called record voiceover. Once I do that, I, it opens this record voiceover window. 
one of the things I need to do is select where, uh, what microphone I want to use for this purpose. So I have a, a few options here. I can use the built-in microphone, for example, which is the computer's built-in microphone, which wouldn't sound very good. Or I can use this much better microphone that I just connected to the back. I'm going to select that. Now we should begin to see, if I hold the microphone here, you can see a little bit of movement on the computer screen there. It's sort of like the little view meter that we used earlier. We could, by the way, also give you a microphone stand and things so you wouldn't have to hold the mic. But I can see just a little tiny bit of movement here. The slider right below that is labeled input gain, and that just basically lets me turn the microphone up louder so that as I'm recording, it's recording my voice at a little bit higher level there. You can also name the clip if you want to. So I could call this Lauren's voiceover um, so that I'd be able to you know, distinguish my recording from someone else's recording. Okay. And then the other thing that's important about the way that Final Cut Pro works is that it's going to record the narration onto the timeline. So it's going to create a clip down here on the timeline so that it allows me to synchronize what I'm saying with what's appearing on the screen. So if I wanted my narration to begin, say, at the beginning of the second clip, I could position the, the playhead right there. And then when I push the play button here, it'll give me a little countdown, uh, and then it'll start recording. You have some options here. You can tell it to, to do the countdown. You also can tell it to mute the audio on the project. So you won't hear the music and you won't hear the waterfall sound while you're recording. So that won't be picked up by the microphone that you're using here. You can also tell it where you want to record this narration to. I can put it in the Emily event, for example, or I can put it into waterfalls, which probably is the better choice here. So once I have all those things set up, now I can click the record button. <clears throat> So it gives me my little countdown. So now I could been, begin describing the scenes that are appearing on the screen, like you know the mossy rocks, and being able to see the, 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 the pool at the bottom of the waterfall. Or I could be recording just a scripted narration, like talking, you know, reading the poetry, or recording some other sort of um, uh, pre-written uh, content like that. When I'm done, I can push the stop button here, and it'll stop my recording. Now you can see here's the narration track that I just recorded. As we've done with all of our other audio, I can raise or lower the level of that with the audio adjustment tools. I can put in fader points. If I, was, if I had a false start, I could uh, chop this into pieces or trim it and put it where I wanted in my finished program. So now when we play this, you'll hear my voice along with the music and along with the waterfall sound. So now I can begin, begin describing the scenes that are appearing on the screen, like the and rocks, and you can see the, the pool at the bottom of the waterfall. So as you can hear from that, I might need to do a little bit of work to adjust the, the level of my voice in comparison of music and the waterfall sounds, but that's one really nice way that you can add additional sound to your program. So besides the um, being able to adjust the levels, you also have tools here in Final Cut to be able to add music, sound effects, and voiceover or narration.